Sylvia Foster Frau is the immigration reporter for the San Antonio Express News. She has broken national stories on the border walls, environmental impact on South Texas, reported in depth on families separated by the Trump administration, investigated the technology, manpower, and billions of dollars used for border security. This year, she won the Texas AP Star Reporter of the Year Award in the biggest newspaper category in Texas. She is a native of Galesburg, Illinois. She graduated, yeah. <laughs> I'm from Illinois and nobody does that for Illinois. Galesburg, Illinois, Sylvia graduated from Grinnell, Grinnell College in 2015. That is in Iowa. Yeah, see, you know, Iowa, and she is also involved in a wonderful show, the Gridiron Show, put on by the Society of Professional Journalists. Are you in it again this year? Yes, you should be. Give it up for a real reporter, not fake news, real journalism with a capital J, Sylvia Foster Frow! Thank you. So even though I'm an immigration reporter, I'm actually not going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to talk about my experience covering the Sutherland Springs mass shooting, um, which happened in 2017. It was sometime around the middle of November in 2017 when I woke up with a jerk start and my heart racing and I had two words on my mind. It was Sutherland Springs. I felt my body fill with what was becoming a familiar dread. I would once again spend my day among grief and pain and trauma that I could not begin to understand and that hopefully if I'm lucky and if you're lucky, we never will. When I hauled myself into the office though, what I found was something that would change my day. It was a care package here um, from the reporters of the Orlando Sentinel who had had to cover the Pulse nightclub shooting in Florida. It was filled with snacks and toys and sticky notes and I took a note to my desk that said, be brave and a small tub of pink Play-Doh that I still keep at my desk. When I left the office that day, I didn't feel like I had that morning. I felt like I was not alone and that I could bear covering one more funeral, like I could bear hearing about death and grief one more time. For those of you who don't know, on November 5th, 2017, the unimaginable became real for our Texas community. A gunman stormed church services in Sutherland Springs and murdered 26 people and wounded 20 others. The Sentinel had sent us a care package because months earlier, their reporters had been covering funerals just like me, documenting the aftermath of a shooting just like ours. So this is what I was up to in 2017. I was interviewing a banana. <laughs> I was just two years out of college and I wrote kind of light features on Sundays for the Monday paper, but on November 5th, I was called to Sutherland Springs and I became the paper's lead reporter. It was from that experience that I learned about this ripple effect of pain and trauma that these shootings cause. First, there's the victims and the survivors that are in the room. Then there's the friends and family and the ripple outside. And then there's the outer ripple of the people who tell all of their stories. And that's who I want to talk about today. It's that outer ripple. It's the journalists. I'll never forget this one funeral of a couple that died together at the church. When I was leaving, I was stuffing a notebook in my purse and the daughter stopped me and asked if I was media. When I said I was, she, her face turned red and she started to cry and she asked me, how could you be there? Get out, I never wanna see you here again. I raced to the car in tears and called my editor crying and I wondered how a profession that I was so passionate about and that I thought did so much good could just feel so wrong in that moment. I still had to write the article and as I did it, I pushed holes into my new pink Play-Doh. There's this term in media that's called parachuting when a news outlet swoops in to cover a tragedy and then swoops out when the breaking news ends. National media tends to do this. It's kind of just the nature of their job. But the local journalists stay long after the public eye has left on to other issues, which these days is often other mass shootings. Being a local reporter covering a mass shooting isn't just emotional too, there's also a lot of ethical questions that get involved. We spent hours agonizing, here are my, me and my editors, um, agonizing over when to use the gunman's name and when to report on the conspiracy theorists without amplifying their voices. The confrontation with that woman at the funeral was a low point in my feelings of my own coverage of the shooting, but it made me determined to redeem myself to that community and, and journalism as a whole to them. 
So me and our amazing photographer, Lisa Krantz, stayed with the community and tended almost every event they had. And I would later find my articles from the Express News tucked for safekeeping into their cupboards or even framed and hanging now at their historical museum downtown. As the months flitted by, I actually became more concerned that instead of not understanding them well enough, I was actually knowing and caring for them too much. Here's me and Sherry, that's the pastor's wife. Um, she lost her 14-year-old daughter in the shooting. And sometimes I still worry if I cross that reporter source line that you're supposed to have. Also, when you stay on a story, um, the interviews get more intense. This is Gunny Macias describing November 5th, 2017. He was shot five times and bleeding, trapped underneath a pew when he made eye contact with a brown-haired girl who was also under the pew. She whispered, Gunny, I'm scared. And he said, I know, honey, let's sing. They began to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Later, he learned that the girl had died. So the closer I got to them, the closer and more deeply that I started to feel their pain. I experienced their trauma vicariously, and I'm a different person now because of it. I'm not very religious, but I get emotional when I hear certain Christian songs. I can barely read news of mass shootings anymore, and often when I'm in big, large rooms, I look for escape routes, and I imagine what would happen if a shooter walked into the room right now and opened fire. Since 2017, there have been four large-scale mass shootings in Texas, and at a national journalist conference last week, a panel said that up to one-fourth of journalists suffer from PTSD or traumatic stress. During one part of the session, the panelists kind of turned the table and asked this room full of journalists what their triggers were. One girl said pooling water because she had had to cover a hurricane. Another person said crowded rooms because they'd had to cover mass shootings. It was the littlest things during that first year of covering Sutherland Springs that came to mean so much to me. I saved this email because it filled me with such comfort to know that there was someone who also felt like we needed faith in humanity cookies and that hope was running a little too thin those days. I came to find that maybe the greatest antidote to grief and pain is a sense of community and nobody taught me that better than the Sutherland Springs. That was the other ripple effect of November 5th, 2017, because soon after that, I started a group called Journalists Covering Trauma with a reporter from the Orlando Sentinel. And together, we raised thousands of dollars and organized to send care packages to local news outlets across the country that were thrust into covering mass shootings. I have a strong belief that we need local journalists to stay with communities and to, in the long haul so that their stories are told the right way. It's an emotional and complicated relationship, but it feels so important. Because if we tell their stories right, then someone who's reading them, who has the power to make a difference in their lives or in this country, will. Yesterday, I put together these six care packages for Midland, Odessa, and they have toys and candy, and I put a little note in each one that tells them to be brave, and of course, a small tub of pink Play-Doh. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> okay, no, no embarrassing personal questions. Uh, before, I, I'd like to ask you some about this, aside also from some of the other work that you do. Mm -hmm. um, now, there was Southern in the Springs. Did you cover Santa Fe? Did you cover uh, El Paso? Did you not want to because of this? So we actually started doing stories where we would cover the Sutherland Springs reaction to Parkland, Santa Fe, and I think we might, I might have done, I can't even remember, the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting, but there were so many that we stopped even covering like their reaction to those stories. Did they, I, I've seen others, but did they pretty much always put you on those stories? And yeah. did you ever say, okay, really, I can't do this because I'm burned out on this? There were some times when we talked about it and I would, especially in the beginning, like they kind of let me look for a different angle. Like I did like a historical piece on Sutherland Springs so I wasn't constantly interviewing, you know, victims, family members and survivors. Um, but yeah, I definitely um, needed to take care of myself and we talked about that. Did that prepare you for going to the border because you've done some stories which are quite emotional, I'm sure, down at the border as well? Yeah, you know, it probably did, just getting used to being exposed to that level of trauma and still being able to do your job. And, um, and yeah, I think, I think there are kind of parallels there. You kind of need a tough skin for that stuff. Do you want to go back to uh, interviewing the banana again? Is that, <laughs> is 
Is that I a would thing, love or did you get to, to interview the break? banana, did see you, how it is now, well, what is it I don't up know. to? Did you, do you take a break now, or do you want to specialize in, uh, in hard news and emotional longer pieces, longer term projects? Um, I mean, I think some of those projects can be breaks. You know, they don't all have to be like doom and gloom about family separation or the border. There are like hopeful stories if you can find them and seek well. them out. And, and one uh, last quick question, because you have kind of a different background than people might expect. Hmm. Foster Frau oh, yeah. is not Foster Frau, it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually half Puerto Rican. <laughs> Sounds like it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Maria. There were more people for Galesburg than for Puerto Rico. Yeah, there is. <laughs> well, they're still dealing with the storm. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Anyway, tell us about uh, how you wanted to become a reporter then, and what would you tell uh, people out here who might want to get into that, even if they're a little bit older? Like why I wanted to become yeah, a reporter? And, yeah, and is it what you thought? Because a lot of people are getting into journalism, and then some of them because of different circumstances leave so often? I mean, I think it's really about if you love writing and you like meeting different kinds of people. One of the things I love is that, especially when I first got here, I was sent all over the city and got to know all these different kinds of neighborhoods and you talk to you know, elected officials and CEOs, but then you also talk to just uh, regular people on the street and you get to see like this wide kind of birth of hum humanity, you know, mm -hmm. all these different kinds of people. So I guess if you're, you're interested in people in that way and you want to understand a little bit more about how the world works and what, the, what those forces are. And the last thing is a plug. SPJ puts on this uh, gridiron <laughs> yeah. show every year. I would be in it, but I'm doing another event that night. It's for a basilica, but tell them what it is, where they can go. Oh my gosh, okay, so it's October 12th and it's put on by the Society of Professional Journalists. It's all fundraisers for um, scholarships for aspiring student journalists. And um, yeah, it's like a sitcom, SNL style event. It's at Texas A&M San Antonio. I'll be playing Cheryl Scully. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and she's pretty good. Yeah. Didn't you have Singing the whip last You had a whip last year, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I had a whip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to give it away, but Cheryl has a whip. I think people know that here. We know Cheryl. <laughs> anyway, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank Sylvia you. Foster Frau.